I'm Rob Cole, host of Leisure King Sport, and over the next 30 minutes, we want you to take a trip with us for a stroll through the Leisure Services Department here at the City of Kingsport. We hope that you'll join us at the beginning of each month for a brand new show featuring a brand new part of this department and to help you discover a world of opportunity that you too can get out and enjoy. And right now we'd like to welcome to our set Helen Whitaker, the manager of the Kingsport Public Library and Archives. Helen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rob. We are uh, here to showcase one of Kingsport's most important critical uh, assets, uh, Kingsport Public Library and Archives. Uh, recently we made a little bit of news with the announcement that we're exploring expansion. And I know a lot of folks out there are asking, why in this age of technology, um, nooks, kindles, and such, are we expanding our library? That's a question we get frequently because a lot of people think, you know, the book will be non-existent in 10 or 15 years. Um, but actually, technology is one reason why we need more space. More and more things are being driven to be online. If you apply for a job, the hospitals here, Eastman, they all accept online applications only. A lot of resumes, you have to to do those online and also send them online and there are people who don't know how to do that so we have to teach classes in how to use computers, how to use the internet, how to do research and we also have found that the federal government and the state government is doing more and more online forms. Uh, for example, no one received federal forms in the mail this year, they're tax forms because you had to either you know, do them online or you would come here if you didn't have a computer. And with 24% of the population in Kingsport being below the poverty level, you know, there's no way everyone's going to have a computer. So we have more and more usage of the computer and we need to have also a classroom to teach classes in. And so these are some needs that we have that, that really mean that we need a larger facility. You know, that's a staggering point that you make there in this day and age of you know, we want it when, we want it now, that a le larger percentage are still without essentially broadband access. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So it's really safe to say that technology is integrating itself into the library as opposed to replacing the library. Yes, and actually we are repurposing ourselves as a result of that. We are, have been working with the community to see what services they want for the next 20 years because it's important for us to be interactive and respond to the needs of the community. So the design of this building is very flexible and we're doing some things uh, to it also that we don't have right now. We're adding a team space which we just have two chairs in the teen area and, and anyone who's ever had teenagers know that they do not like to be around toddlers so they'll have their own space. The archives will move from the basement area and it will be upstairs in a wonderful area that people can do research and a place where we can expand the archives collection. We will have a lot of study rooms. You know, the academic village is only about five blocks away. So we have factored in that student population to our users. And we actually need ourselves some quiet study rooms. We have a lot of tutoring that goes on here. We have a volunteer who works one-on-one -on -one with people on their resumes. We have a wonderful reading uh, to your your dog program where we have seven uh, certified therapy dogs yeah. and children come in and read one-on-one -on -one to those dogs and it improves their reading skills but we're sharing that space with about three other purposes right now. So. We have a need for additional space just to provide our traditional services. And another example is the story time area. We share that with the auditorium, so our computer classes are in the same space. Any meetings we have are in the same space. And we'd really like to have a dedicated story time room so we can set up there and the children will have their space and, and we, we won't have to keep setting it up and, and tearing it down all the time. So we have traditional needs for expansion as well as, as the technology. You know, that's very exciting. And I think you hit on something that I know a lot of folks tend to forget about and that is with the growth of the academic village um, the attendance at the Kingsport Public Library is increasing. It's not uh, as contrary to myth decreasing in any way shape or form with technology and uh, very well put. And you know speaking of technology one of the things I 
folks that I've learned is that this very Kingsport Public Library is active in uh, helping folks to learn how to use the computer for things you just mentioned, job resumes, beginners. Um, so critical components you're covering here that will no doubt, I guess, be enhanced, it looks like, by the expansion. Right. Um, well, you know, this is... Um, We've got a little bit of a teaser here to the left and right of us, and, and I don't mind saying, folks, this is very exciting. Uh, anytime we're talking about growth, expansion, it's a good thing. Can you tell us a little bit more about what it'll look like? I mean, we're looking at some things that are pretty exciting just over our shoulders. Yeah, and people want to know, where is this going to be? Um, we did receive a lot of feedback from the community and they wanted it to stay here. So we worked with the architect and our space planners and we determined that we could leave it here. And what we're going to do is, this is the existing library and this is Broad Street. So we will renovate the existing library and the addition will be right here at the back of the park and using some of the parking area on Shelby Street. We have determined that the gazebo will have to move but engineers with the city have looked at that and it can be moved. And we know there are a lot of people concerned about the Founders Fountain, and we have talked to some people in the community about that. And what we think is important is to maintain that concept of the Founders Fountain. So for now, the concept is maintained in this fountain that will come along the front walkway. So what is the front door now will be closed. There will be a garden here and the front door, this will be the pathway to the front door, which will come in this way. The building will be a, a green, sustainable building. There will be a lot more light in it. It will be a very flexible interior for one reason, because we don't know where technology is going to take us down the road. And as we repurpose, we want to be able to change our, our uh, services to meet the needs of the public. So that's where it will be. And this is what it will look like. We've worked really... Uh, hard with the architects to try to maintain the the look of this area since we are in historic district and we have the bank on the other side and this was built in 1932 originally as a post office so we're maintaining that look and then the addition is right to the right side and those uh, arches are maintained but we will be bringing more light in and more some sustainable features as well. Well, wow, that's very impressive. We're excited about it. That's very impressive. And, you know, you hit on something, too, um, being green. Uh, I know for us, we just went through this a little bit at Base Mountain Park. And essentially what that means is, folks, and I can only speak for Base Mountain Park for a real quick moment, because of some of the changes we made going green, we are able to save the city up to $65,000 per year on lighting, heating, cooling, things of that nature. So, you know, it's a great return on investment. You know, you mentioned the um, you mentioned the uh, the garden, uh, mm -hmm. the new fountain, the courtyard there. That's a pretty exciting feature, and as you mentioned, is important to a lot of different people. Um, that's still obviously going to be an important place, uh, an important feature of the library. Um, Mardi Gras, things of that nature have taken place out here historically. Will that still be the case, do you anticipate? Yes, we hope to um, re-landscape re this whole area and open it up more. Right now you have a lot of different things. You've got the, the, the fountain, you've got the gazebo, you've got the flag, and a lot of things that kind of cut up the space. So what we want to do as we go forward, and of course this, there's not as much design that's gone into this. We've been concentrating on the right. building, but we, we do know that we want to open this up, have like an outdoor reading area, and also have it open enough and accessible so it'll be very user-friendly for events and things. Awesome. Well, that makes the entire campus really so much more flexible. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, very forward-thinking. Um, let's talk a little bit about the inside. Uh, as exciting as this is, I can only imagine um, how things are going to change on the inside. Oh, we're excited about the inside, yeah. Um, as I said, we're going to have a lot more light, more transparency. We will be um, pulling in, uh, creating all the way those windows where there's a porch now. So there'll be windows all the way to that area. 
we're going to have some self-serve checkout machines like you have in the grocery store. Wow. We're going to have a return bin that when you return your books, you drop them in there and they're checked in and they go down a conveyor belt and then they're sorted into different uh, bins by adult fiction or nonfiction or children's fiction so that it will make it easier for the staff to reshelve the books and it also will mean the staff has more time to work with the customer helping them find what they need rather than checking in books and, and sorting them. Wow, so that, we're yeah. excited about that. We are moving the archives from the basement to the top level. They will be in this area right there. So it'll be a very nice space for the archives. And um, yeah, it's just going to be very open and, and again, very flexible. Very impressive and boy, very efficient. That's uh, very exciting. It's, we've tried to keep a lot of sight lines so that uh, visually we can control the this, this space, which would require fewer staff members. Yeah, which is critical for you guys because you still are a, a customer-oriented business. You mm -hmm. guys still interface very much with your visitors. Right. Um, very impressive. Well, we said a lot about architecture and design. Uh, with what we can give away. And I know po folks are always curious, where does money to do this come from? I know there are a couple of different options you're looking for. In fact, uh, I'm cheating a little bit. These are some of the hardest working folks you'll ever meet. Um, tell the public a little bit more about where that funding is actually coming from to make this dream a reality. The facility will, will cost about $11.5 million dollars and the city is going to bond out eight and a half million and then the library will need to come up with an additional three million dollars locally so if there are wonderful library supporters out there we'd love to hear from you um, and we're just you know hope to get the word out to the community that you know books are not dead that a library is still a very vital part of a city and it's important to local economy that's right. That's um, that's a great point. Number one, books aren't dead. You know, as reliable as the internet is, there's only so much to be found on there, reliably speaking. And you can't, you know, while you can download entire books on Kindles and Nooks, there's nothing quite like the experience of doing that research, multiple books, uh, finding a quiet place. And you're right, the economic impact. That's something we often don't associate with libraries, but that's very true, isn't it? It is, and, and when difficult times uh, come around like they have lately, our usage goes up. And we have about eight or 900 people a day who come into the library. So when you talk about renovation of downtown Kingsport, we're bringing in eight to 900 feet on the street. And with renovations and, and new buildings and, and those types of things, that usually increases. So we're expecting to bring in about 1,500 people wow. a day after the renovation. That is remarkable. Safe to say the Kingsport Public Library is going to be an anchor for downtown Kingsport for years to come, thanks to this expansion. Um, when are we looking at possibly starting the build? We're looking at starting in 2013 and anticipate it will take about 18 months. And during that time, the staff and uh, services of the existing library will move somewhere that's vacant, like a, a grocery store. That's what Bristol Public Library did when they renovated and then would be open uh, for business in 2015. Wow. Yeah. You know, that's not that far off. Um, my goodness, how exciting is that? Helen, thank you very much. Thank you, that Rob. I appreciate it. Very exciting information indeed. I think we can all agree on that. And uh, we look forward to 2013 and then beyond that, 2015. We'll still be here. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> okay, thank you.
Welcome back to Leisure King Sport. Our very next guest with us is a very special guest, Shirley Buchanan, director of the King Sport Senior Center. Shirley, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Pleased to have you. Shirley has got some exciting details she's going to cue us in on, on uh, some goings on at the Senior Center uh, for the month of September specifically. Um, what you got going? Well, the fall is a very um, active time for us. Uh, people are getting out of their gardens and back into the Senior Center for some activities. And starting the week of September 12th, we'll be starting all of our new class uh, schedule. We have some added uh, classes on that schedule, some added clay classes. We're going to be opening the wood shop back up. Uh, it's been down for quite some time, and we're going to offer some wood shop classes. So we're so. very excited about that week especially. But we also have um, trips and seminars, lots of things going on in September. So Awesome. Awesome. We like to hear the wood shop opening back we up. We do. We really do. We're very excited about that. We've gotten a couple of new pieces of equipment, a new planer and a new belt sander. And we're going to be offering a basic woodworking class. And we're going to be offering maybe how to make a dulcimer class. And oh, wow. Yeah, some really um, interesting classes in there. So much going on at the Senior Center that a lot of folks don't even realize. That's very true. Not only can you make a dulcimer, but you can learn how to play a dulcimer. We're having a new intermediate dulcimer class. We're having a, we have a beginners, and now we have a new intermediate uh, dulcimer class starting in the fall, which is new um, to that section, and um, we're very excited about that. But we also have piano lessons, um, aerobics. Zumba classes, wow. pickleball, basketball, volleyball, um, billiards, uh, jam session. If you know how to play a musical instrument, you can come on Thursday afternoons and you can jump, uh, jump right in and join in on the fun. So we have lots of things going on every single day. I make a good listener, but I don't make a good play. Oh, no, I'd you don't. Well, you, you can know, come and listen then. That is a literally a ton of activities available for folks to enjoy. How do folks get plugged into this? What 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 does someone need to do to get involved in these activities? Well, all you have to do is be 50 and come and visit the Senior Center. We're um, located on the first floor of the Renaissance Center at 1200 East Center Street in Kingsport. And if you come by, the staff will be glad to give you a tour. They'll be glad to uh, show you around the place and show you what we have to offer, give you a newsletter, and set you up on whatever you want to do. Fantastic. And folks, they have a wonderful, wonderful staff. Um, now, you mentioned some other programs, in fact, uh, before we I do. rudely interrupted. We do. We have a d disaster preparedness program that's going to take place on September 6th. The Red Cross is going to come in, and they're going to show us what we need to be prepared. You know how uh, we had all the hurricanes this year, and, um, you know, close to home, there were... Um, homes and people that were not prepared for the devastation that they had and yeah. we'd like for everybody in Kingsport and Sullivan County especially to be prepared especially seniors in their home and so this is a good way for us to learn how to be prepared for that. Boy that's a that's a, a stark reminder. It uh, is. You know and sadly you're, you're right we uh, found out more so than ever before this past spring and summer um, just how sometimes unprepared we truly are. We just don't think about these things, unfortunately. And the mentality, I think, is, I think this is historically true. We don't think about these things until they're upon us or until they've happened. So, uh, boy, that that's a spot-on program. And I don't know about you, but I know for myself, whenever I go to one of these programs, I'm all fired up to go home, get my flashlight out, put it where I know it is, and then I don't do it. Oh. So what we need to do is make sure that when you come to the program, you can get some information and go home and make yourself a, a disaster preparedness pack. Little fall through then. Yeah. Put a little, little hustle, bit. Yeah. Little hustle behind that muscle. Well, and that's a good thought. You know, there's no time like the present when it's fresh on your mind to, to right. put that into motion and, and make that happen. And as we found out again this past spring, I can't underscore the importance of this enough. 
uh, we found out all too harshly um, what happens when we're not prepared. So, very good. Um, anything else at the Senior Center you want yes, to bring to have, our attention today? We have several trips that we're going to be taking. One of these trips is a favorite of our seniors, but would be interesting for someone to come out and, and go with us. We have some wellness trips this fall. We have a trip down the Creeper Trail. We're going to bike the Creeper Trail. And oh, boy. What's fun about this trip is we get a ride up and then we ride down. So <laughs> even though it's a wellness trip, it's still, you know, um, limited, um, ex you know, expenditure on your exercise. Hey, so. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and it's a lot. It's a really fun trip. So we're going to be doing that. We're also going to be taking a tour around Lake Lure this September. So um, oh, you can, again, look online for the for the exact dates and sign-up times and come by the Senior Center and sign up for them. Lake Lure is a very, uh, everyone loves to go on that. We're going to be taking a boat ride around Lake Lure and eating lunch on the lake and um, they're going to tell us all about the homes around there and, and what it was like before it was actually a lake. That's incredible. An incredible amount of things to do and you know the um, just have to be 50 and above folks. Right. That's all. World of opportunity um, to get out, enjoy and relax, uh, stay physically fit, active, uh, continue meeting new people, what am I missing? I mean, wh where else do you need to go? Well, that's it. You need to just come and, and see what the city has to offer for 50-year-olds and older. Absolutely amazing. Shirley, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>